Today we talked about finding the least common denominator, and we went over two different ways of doing that. One of them is the multiples method, and the other one is the ladder method. So I'm going to show a few examples of both of those methods. So for number five here, we have one-fourth and three-eighths, and we want to find the least common denominator. So what you can do is just write down the two common, or excuse me, the two denominators, and just write out all their multiples. So for 4, we have 4, 8, 12, 16. And for 8, we have 8, 16, 24. And we could go on, but um, <clears throat> if you uh, look at these two lists of numbers, you want to find uh, any numbers that they have in common. Now we have an 8 here. They both have 8, and they both have 16. These are common multiples. And when those common multiples are the denominators of fractions, we call those common denominators. And you can use a common denominator to change these fractions so that they have the same denominator. Um, so you can add or subtract them if you need to. We're not doing that in this lesson, but we're going to do it in the next lesson. So that's why it's important to know how to find a common denominator. But generally speaking, we want to find the least common denominator. That's the smallest denominator that they have in common. And in this case, it's 8. You could use 16, but it's going to be a little bit more work. So generally, we, we go for the, uh, common, the least common denominator. So for this, in this case, it's 8. So... Now I'm going to show you the ladder method of finding the same answer. <clears throat> um, what I just showed you was a multiples method. Now the ladder method, you take your two denominators, and you put a little bracket around them like this, and then you look and see, well, what can I divide both of these by? Well, I can divide 4 and 8 by 4. If I, if I divide them by 2, that would be fine, because then I would just divide by 2 later. But I can see they're both divisible by 4. Now I divide them by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I put the 1 here. And 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I put the 2 here, and then I put another bracket. Then I look at these two numbers, and I think, what can I divide both of these by? And I can divide it by 1 only. And once I have a 1 on the side of my bracket, then I can stop dividing. Then I circle all the numbers on the bottom and on the side, making an L like this, which stands for least common denominator. You can think of it like that. And then I just multiply everything that's inside of it. Okay, so I have 4 times 1 is 4, times 1 is 4, times 2 is 8. So I get 8 in that case also. So either way will give you the same least common denominator. And... So the next thing you do, once you find your least common denominator, you have to change these fractions so they have the same denominator <clears throat> using equivalent fractions. So I take 1 fourth equals blank over 8. Remember, 8 is my least common denominator. 1 fourth is my original fraction. And my other fraction is 3 eighths. And I make that blank over 8. Now, what do I multiply 4 by to get 8? I multiply it by 2. Since I multiply the bottom by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2 also. And 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 eighths is my first fraction. Now 3 eighths already has 8 as a denominator, so I don't have to do anything to it. So my two equivalent fractions <clears throat> that are equivalent to my original fraction uh, are 2 eighths and 3 eighths. And... The whole purpose, the whole objective of this to, was to get, uh, to have these two fractions have the same denominator, and we want it to have the least common denominator. I could have four sixteenths and six sixteenths. It would be, that would also be, those would also be equivalent, have the same denominator, but we use the least common denominator because it's less work. Smaller numbers are easier. So if I wanted to add one-fourth and three-eighths, I would have to change it to two-eighths and three-eighths first. And now I could, I could add those if I wanted to. And now I get 5 eighths, since they have the same denominator. So I'll try another one. <clears throat> now we have 11 twelfths and 5 eighths. 
And so I'm going to write down their multiples. I'm going to do the multiples method first. Um, eight, the multiples of eight are eight, 16, 24, 32, and I'm going to stop there. And 12, I have 12, 24, oh, and I can see that I have 24 in common. So 24 is my least common denominator. Now I'm going to do the same thing using the ladder method. Either method is fine. You just do whichever one you like best. 12 and 8. I put my two denominators in a bracket. And 12 and 8 are both divisible by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. I can't divide 3 and 2 by anything except for 1. And I circle the side and the bottom of my um, ladder, and making an L for least common denominator, then I multiply all the numbers inside. 4 times 1 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6, so I get 24. So once again, 24 is my least common denominator. Two ways of doing that. Now I need to find equivalent fractions. Remember, that's what the homework is asking you to do, find equivalent fractions. Yeah. You have to find equivalent fractions with the least common denominator. So the first thing you have to do is find the least common denominator, but then you have to find equivalent fractions with that denominator. So 11 twelfths equals blank over 24, and 5 eighths equals blank over 24. So I need to change these numerators. Um, 12 times 2 is 24, so I need to multiply the top and bottom by 2. Uh, 2 times 11 is 22. And 8 times 3 is 24. For, so for this second fraction, I need to multiply the top and bottom by 3. 5 times 3 is 15. So my two denominators are 22 24 and 15 24 Now if I wanted to add these or subtract them, I could because they have the same denominator now. All right. Now I will do the last one. I have four-fifths and one-sixth, so I can write my multiples. Five is five, ten, fifteen, twenty, I'm running out of room, twenty-five, thirty, and then six would be six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, and thirty, and I can see that they have thirty in common, so the least common denominator in this case is 30. Now let me show you how to do this using the ladder method. I put my denominators here, put a bracket around them, and I cannot divide 5 and 6 by anything except for 1. So I'm done. I just multiply those together and I get 30. Give me the same answer. So I have my least common denominator. Now I'm going to have to find equivalent fractions. So I have um, Excuse me, I have um, 4 fifths equals blank over 30, and I have 1 sixth equals blank over 30. Now to get from 5 to 30, um, I need to multiply by 6. So I have to multiply the top by 6, and I get 24 thirtieths. To go up from 6 to 30, I have to multiply by 5. So I have to multiply the top by 5 also, and I get 5 thirtieths. These are my fractions that have, uh, these are my equivalent fractions, equivalent to 4 fifths and 1 sixth. Except now they have the same denominator, so if I wanted to add or subtract them, now I can.